So in this test, we are going to be looking at the motility test. This is day one, which is the setup, and this is activity 5-28. So the purpose of this test is to determine whether bacteria are modal, meaning can they move. Ultimately, what this is really testing is if you think about a main structure that bacteria have for motility would be flagella. So essentially this test is looking at do bacteria have flagella which allow them to be modal. So this experiment would be done in groups of four. You would need four motility augers and it is going to be a semi-solid and so you would use a needle to stab the auger and you would do this one organism per two. The technique to inoculate this is very similar to how we inoculate an OF broth, right? Where we stab inoculate, we go to the bottom about one centimeter from the bottom, and we come straight back up. And so your group of four would have four tubes. One of them would have E. coli. One would have Klebsiella pneumoniae. One would have Enterobacter aerogenes. And the last one would have Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And so now we have a video demonstrating how to set up this test. So in this experiment, we are going to do a motility test. And the purpose of this test is to determine if bacteria are modal, meaning can they move. So when we do this setup, we would actually have four of these motility broths. There are four organisms that we will test. However, for the sake of demonstration, I'm only gonna demonstrate one. So notice that if I look at this motility auger, notice that it's not a broth, right? It is a semi-solid. If you recall when we did our OF test, that was a, an auger deep. It has a low concentration of auger. Same thing with this motility auger. It has a low concentration of auger. So what that tells us is that we can't inoculate this with a loop. We need to inoculate it with a needle and we're gonna do a stab inoculation, again, just like we did for the OF test. So I would label my tube. I have my needle, and I'm going to take the needle, and I'm going to flame sterilize, and I'm going to let it cool. While it's cooling, I'm gonna open the screw top. The one that I have that I'm testing for this experiment now the demonstration is E. coli, but again, there would be four of those tubes that you would inoculate. So I'm gonna take the cat pinky and ring finger, flame, I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna pick up some bacteria from the slant. Come back out, cat. All right. Now, I need to stab inoculate this too. So I'm gonna take the cap, pinky and ring finger, and I'm gonna stab, so if you can see this, I'm gonna stab, and I'm gonna go about one centimeter from the bottom, and I'm gonna come straight back out, flame it, cap, and then flame my needle. And so again, I would do this for all four organisms, and then I would put them in the incubator and incubate for 48 hours. So now we're gonna look at our readout of our motility test. And so this will be day two. So we need to talk first about what is in the motility auger. So again, when you do your biochemical sheet, name of the media is going to be motility auger. And so if we look at the list of ingredients, we have beef extract. Beef extract is there as food for general growth. It's there simply to support growth. We have pancreatic digestive gelatin. Again, this would be another word for peptones. The peptones are there as food for general growth. We have auger, and the auger is a low percentage. And this auger is 0.4% versus a standard slant, which would be 1.5%. So notice it's about a quarter of the concentration of agar. So it's a low concentration and it's there to make a semi-solid for the detection of motility. Because if it's a broth, right, 
the bacteria is all going to mix together. You're not going to be able to determine motility. If the auger concentration is too high, bacteria are not going to be able to move through the auger. So we need a low percentage of auger to form a semi-solid for the detection of motility. Next, we have our triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride, otherwise known as TTC. If you know TTC, I'm not going to make you know what TTC stands for. So just know TTC. And TTC is there to detect bacterial growth, basically to show the presence of bacteria, meaning it makes it easier for us to visualize where the bacteria is growing. So in this test, our substrate is our TTC, and when the TTC is oxidized, it is going to be colorless. You can hold off and wait to understand what oxidized and reduced means. We will learn about that in the next week. Basically, we're going to learn about redox reactions. Oxidation is going to be a loss of electrons. Reduction is going to be a gain. And again, we'll focus more on that next week. So just know for now, TTC, when it's oxidized, that's our substrate, and it's colorless. Now, bacteria will have reductase enzymes. And this is not just one enzyme. It's various endoenzymes, meaning that bacteria will have a variety of reductase enzymes, that are able to reduce the TTC. And when they reduce the TTC, the product is going to be the formazin. And the formazin is in the reduced form, meaning it gained hydrogens and it gained electrons. And the formazin is gonna be our product and it's going to be red. So one of the things to keep in mind in this test, all bacteria, are going to appear red. Whether or not they're modal, they still will be red. The purpose of the red is simply to show us where the bacteria grew, meaning did they only grow along the stab line, meaning they're not modal, or were the bacteria able to migrate and make their way through the auger, in which case you're gonna see this fuzziness. And so both positive and negative for motility is going to have growth, it's going to be red, because bacteria have these various reductase enzymes. So the red is just simply showing us where the bacteria grew. So in our motility test, there are four organisms that are tested. We have our E. coli, we have Klebsiella pneumoniae, we have Enterobacter erogenes, and we have our Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So in this experiment, remember that the red color just tells us there is bacteria present. So again, it's not like red is a positive and no red is negative. That's not what we're looking at here. Red is just showing where bacteria grew. So what we're really trying to look at is if it's positive, meaning it has the ability to be modal, it does have the ability to move. Positive is going to be fuzzy appearance migrating away from the stab line. So remember that you inoculate this with a needle and you just stab inoculate it. So if you see this fuzziness, that tells us that the bacteria are modal. That's our positive in this test. This, so that's our positive. Over here, this is our negative. Notice that we still see red. So again, red is not what is positive or negative. It's where the red is that tells us positive or negative. So in the negative, we just see growth along the stab line. So notice that there is no fuzziness. The bacteria only grew where they were inoculated. That's gonna be our negative. So what we're looking for is, again, both positive and negative will have growth. You will see red, but it's where is red that tells us whether it's positive or negative. If it's away from the stab line, that is positive for motility. That means that the bacteria were able to move through the auger. If bacteria are only along the stab line, that is going to be a negative. They were not able to move away from the stab line. So let's look at our results.
So in this picture, we're only showing three of the results. There is a fourth organism, and I'll explain that one more in a minute. But let's start with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So our technicians set up these tubes and they stab inoculated. They didn't go one centimeter from the bottom, but you still get the idea. So notice that for Pseudomonas aeruginosa, we can see this kind of funnel looking shape. And what that means is that the bacteria are modal aerobically towards the top. So this bacteria is modal. It's modal aerobically though. That's where you can see this fuzziness. If we look at E. coli, notice that E. coli is very modal. It's what we call peritrichus. It's covered in flagella and it has the ability to move. So my Pseudomonas is positive, my E. coli is positive. If we were doing this, if we had a picture here and we did this for EA, Enterobacter erogenes, you would also see positive. It would be fuzzy away from the stab line. However, if we look at Klebsiella pneumoniae, KP, notice that the bacteria are only by the stab line. They're only where they were inoculated. That's because Klebsiella pneumoniae is going to be negative for motility. It's not modal, therefore it cannot move, and that's why we only see bacteria along the stab line. So these would be our results. Now, do you need to memorize which organism gave which result? The answer is no, but if shown a picture of something that looks like one of these tubes, you should be able to tell me whether it's modal or not. So, and again, it's not just the red, both positive and negative are red, it's where is the red? Is the red along the stab line or did it migrate away from that? So what we're seeing here, this is a phenomenon called swarming. And so Proteus mirabilis is very modal, it's highly modal as well. And so when it grows, it gives this unique kind of ring looking structure because of this swarm swarming. I have a time-lapse video showing you this so that you can see this in action, and I'll show you that in just a minute. But down below, we are looking at a flagella stain. You would not do a flagella stain in this class. However, there was a question in your question set for the beginning of the class. And in that question set, it basically asked for different types of differential stains, meaning that they allow us to differentiate bacteria. So a flagella stain is a type of differential stain. It allows us to differentiate between bacteria that produce a flagella and those that don't. So notice that in this case, this particular bacteria has flagella coming off each end. We refer to that as amphitrichus. It has this dual nature. It's coming out both ends. If we look down here, notice that you can see all these little squigglies all around. That's because in that case, that type of flagella is peritrichus. It's all over the surface. And so it looks like it has all these little hairs coming out, but in fact, those are gonna be flagella. And so now I'm gonna show you a time-lapse video for swarming, and then that will conclude our video for motility test.